Hello there, ladies and gentlemen, and welcome back to San Geraldo Zoo. I'm really excited to show you this corner of the park. Um, this is the eastern corner towards the front of the park, um, and it is definitely my favorite expansion I've made to this date. If you head back that way and down the canyon, uh, you'll end up by the Sun Bear Forest, so we're kind of on the back side of the Sun Bear Forest here. And this part is definitely inspired by two parts of the San Diego Zoo that um, that I really love dearly. Uh, one I love because it's newer, and that is the Australian section of the park. And the other I love for a very different reason, even though it's controversial, and that is the urban jungle section of the San Diego Zoo. And um, for those of you who are familiar with the park, I'm going to talk a little bit about the controversy there in a minute. But um, you'll see also uh, I took a lot of my own artistic liberties in this area while still keeping the inspiration. So I'm excited to show this off to you all today. So we're going to start off by taking a look at the, um, at the gift shop corner of the park. And this actually is our sort of border here. On the other side of that is the road, which I'll be fleshing out. Uh, later and actually will be giving us a lot of the access we need for some of the bigger sections of the park But as you can see here, I took the the very bright colorful style um, And even the name the Sid uh, Sydney shop uh, from San Diego Zoo and As you can see also, we've got the monorail running through all of this. So it's kind of um, you Got this little fun tunnel up here that they can go through. We've got a restroom in the back We've got the Koala Cafe here. Um, I took, I, normally I don't really theme things heavily in the park. I tend to keep things pretty basic and um, and really sort of realistic, very concrete, very, um, very drab in a lot of ways. But for the Australia section, I just couldn't help it because I feel like in most parks, whenever they introduce an Australian section, they're usually a a newer section and um, and zoos usually go all out to make sure that these sections look good and look fun and inviting um, and so I I just couldn't help it I had to go all out and use the Australian DLC pieces wherever I could um, and that opposites our first exhibit here which is the koala now, I definitely, definitely got the inspiration for this koala habitat from the San Diego Zoo. The building here on the right, um, I believe in the park, houses like their veterinary and indoor um, to caretaking uh, for the koalas. Um, and then the outdoor paddocks kind of circle around this boardwalk here. Um, and shout out to Sui, who... Um, provided a lot of amazing things for this park. Um, and you can see down into these little pens here, um, we've got the male koala separate here on this side. And then on the back side here, we have all the females together. And they do this uh, in the park because Really, the males tend to get very territorial, and um, they can even get territorial of the females. So when it's time for breeding, they will actually bring the males. They'll just they'll literally pick them up because um, koalas do tend to bite very hard. So they'll pick them up backwards, their rump facing their chest, holding them out, and um, it's really kind of funny. It's kind of like they're a forklift for a koala, and they will just walk them over to the other pen, let them hang out with the females a bit, let them uh, mark their scent, and um, and hopefully eventually make little baby koalas. Um, as you can see there, we get a glimpse here on the back side of just this little walkway and back door um, access here for the koalas that's all set uh, and easily accessible by the keepers. If we go back to the boardwalk here, we continue our Australian journey and check out the kookaburra exhibit, which of course we do not have kookaburras in the uh, 
in the game right now, but I just love making these uh, implied exhibits. It totally fills in the the whole zoo and makes it feel just more real and lively that um, the, these small, small exhibits, which zoos have tons of, um, for one or two animals or small mammals or lizards or whatnot, um, or birds, of course. And it just fills in that space um, where I couldn't put one of the in-game animals. And it just makes it feel really um, realistic to me. And we got a very special exhibit on the right here, which I'll come back to in a second. But as you continue on this boardwalk here, you end up next to the cassowary exhibit. Now we get our first peek into the cassowary exhibit here. We've got um, some signage uh, highlighting how big they are compared to the other uh, flightless birds. We've got a keeper in there. And we'll come back this way um, to show you the other side of the cassowary exhibit. But first, we'll just look past those for now. We got to come over here to the Devil's Den, which is one of my favorite implied exhibits that I've got because we've got this lovely sloping area here and this beautiful pen for Tasmanian devils. And you can see they've got their backstage access here. So um, I'm kind of using the central building not only for the koalas, but also for the Tasmanian devils, um, as well as um, this front area here we come around which actually has some daytime housing for them some burrows and this um, was definitely inspired by the San Diego Zoo I went a little big on it though I think that the rock face is a lot smaller uh, in real life but um, but they've got this really um, this really cool rock face with the um, interior view of these dens and you can get right up in there and see um, the Tasmanian devils crawling and climbing in there and in the real life zoo they actually have these um, little metal sculptures of other kinds of Australian creatures and that's because um, for the most part I if I'm not mistaken I believe it's just the uh, kangaroo the wallaby the Tasmanian devil and the koala that are really um, seen outside of Australia. Most other Australian animals are kept in um, uh, in the island itself um, and so they don't usually kind of um, let those animals leave to go to zoos in other parts of the world but because I'm a dreamer and because I wish that um, that we could see some of those animals I created this other side of across from the Tasmanian devils here so that we could see some of those creatures that normally aren't seen outside of Australia. So we've got the short-beaked echidna here. We've got the numbat, which is a very small marsupial. And then we've got a larger exhibit for the spotted-tailed quoll. And again, all implied exhibits, but I just I love how I can take a corner that would otherwise be empty or full of foliage and just place down a fence and make it look awesome and, uh, and make it look like there's an animal in there. And then we have another aviary over here for the tawny frogmouth, which is a very curious uh, bird. I know when I first saw it, I literally thought that the stump it was sitting on had melded upward um, to create this feathered toad. They are really weird looking creatures, and so I just had to have um, them in my park. Um, and they are they are not owls, but they look like them. Um, but they're the, the whole frog mouth uh, species is, is, is just a bizarre bird, and they're so cool. But here we have uh, sort of this low shack for the other side of the exhibit here with the cassowary. And as you can see, uh, it's pretty, uh, pretty barren. This is where the um, this is where the realistic part of the zoo comes in. As you can see, I've kind of got this painted corrugated fence here. Um, it's a small exhibit. Cassowary doesn't really need much more. Hi there. Um, and they've got a little backstage here, and access for the keepers to get in. 
Um, and this is kind of how zoos usually do their Australian exhibits. While they do add like a bright coat of paint and make it all flashy um, for their guests, uh, there usually isn't that much effort put into making the exhibits like because they're not usually intended to be permanent exhibits so um so they're usually kind of uh thrown together um lots of chain link um and really i just kind of splurged a little bit on this uh nice mesh here uh for the front but for the back we just have this colored corrugated metal and i like it because it kind of blends in and you don't really notice it too much um even though it's like right there we got some plants growing on it so that there is the cassowary exhibit and here we get into um, my favorite part of the zoo and that is um, my inspiration for uh, this is sorry this is definitely inspired by the um, the urban jungle and I think I like this so much because it's a little bit of nostalgia for me um, we'll come back to the Australia Trail in here in a second. It's a little bit of nostalgia here for me um, because when I first came to the zoo, this is where the elephants were housed. Um, and then later on, this is where the uh, the rhinoceros, the Indian rhinoceros, the one-horned rhinoceros was housed. And it's just this big central area. We got all these um, these palm trees, which, oh my gosh, the new palm trees with the um, the new update and the Africa pack. I think these were in the free update. So these are amazing. They're I think they're the African oil palm trees. And I had um, I had previously used um, some palm trees that someone made in one of the many foliage packs on the workshop, and they were doing great. But the um, they just had this line in the middle because, of course, there are two palm trees stuck to each other, like top to bottom, uh, in order to um, to get that height. Because with everything else we had in the game up to this point was really small. So the fact that we have these tall, beautiful palm trees now um, are is just awesome. And so, as you can see here, we I left the exhibit looking very similar to how it does in real life. We've got these big pylons with the, um, I used the in-game electric fencing in order to get that wire look. Um, but of course, we don't have rhinos in there anymore. Um, and actually, I explained that over here in our, in our exhibit signage. And that is explaining that the rhinos used to be here. We even have some old time footage of the rhinos in there. Um, but because we're studying the rhinoceros, uh, the one-horned rhinoceros, and we're realizing, oh look, we got a lot of rhino heads over here, and we're realizing that the um, that the animals don't do so well in such a small area. They need a bigger area, uh, so there's going to be a much larger one-horned rhinoceros exhibit over in the lost forest area of the park, and we have moved in the um, the Gemsbach here, which do much better in this smaller exhibit. Um, they're much happier and it's just a better situation for everybody. So instead of completely bulldozing this whole area and making something brand spanking new, I decided to kind of keep that old, but, um, but do what a lot of zoos do and kind of repurpose their exhibits. A lot of zoos even take like their old concrete exhibits and they'll add soil into it um, because it takes a lot of money to renovate like the old concrete exhibit. Uh, so they'll they'll add a whole bunch of soil, change the terrain, add plants and things, um, still keeping the same shell, but um, but ultimately um, improving the animals' welfare once they're in that exhibit. So again, we're kind of coming back around. We've got the um, the shelter in the back here full of um, the stables where the the Gemsbach can be. We've got an exterior, let me just take a whoop, up here, sneak peek. Um, we've got an exterior paddock over in the back um, in case any of the animals need to be separated or um, if there's a quarantine um, or if there's fighting happening and or if uh, if someone just needs a, a peaceful little area to have their children and raise them um, before re being reintroduced to the herd um, 
then they can be secluded back there. And of course we have our access here for bulldozers or, um, or even if they're deciding to drop the animals off here, um, they can pull the trailer right up, um, have the gate open and let the Gemsbach out into the exhibit. All right, let's go ahead and tuck back in here. We've got some backstage here. There's that access to the cassowary there. Got some backstage here, uh, nothing too special, just uh, kind of housing some crates and access for the animal on the other side of this wall here. But as you can see here, we kind of got this uh, lovely overhang. Provides a little bit of shade, um, but it's not necessarily, um, it's more for decoration than anything. Um, and we got this nice grassy area um, in case parents want to take a moment in this semi-shade, let their kids kind of roam in the grass. Um, it's a great, great little corner. And of course we've got the, um, the exhibits here. We've got the skink, the blue-tailed skink, and I believe this is the death adder, um, which are uh, both native to Australia. Little signage here for our kangaroos. Now this exhibit, um, this exhibit was um, partially inspired by my old hometown zoo, the Sacramento Zoo, um, and there's this, um, they have this big concrete um, tube that they've kind of buried in to make a, um, a burrow for them there, um, and I really wanted them to be able to use it, so I didn't bury it um, as much as... In, as it is in the Sa uh, Sacramento Zoo because I think that they usually they actually have a mound of dirt over it so it's like a tunnel that they can go through um, so I, I have it here so that the um, sometimes you'll see the um, kangaroos would just be lounging in there and, and hanging out and having a good time um, oh one thing I didn't uh, point out uh, that I've already started to add into the park well for first First off, we got this lovely fever tree here. I'm just gonna pop back over here for a second. Um, I had to immediately start adding the new grass um, from the update into this park because, oh my gosh, it is just so perfect for, it just, it just looks like the kind of weeds that grow in some of the corners of the park um, where, like, for example, I've got the eel grass over here, which is providing this sort of lush, um, side of the barrier for the guests but um but most of the time these uh like if grass is growing in exhibits and granted the um the gazelles here are going to definitely be munching this down um but most of the time these sort of grasses are not going to be um planted intentionally or well kept so they kind of have this windswept um weed like look and i just think it adds so much realism to the park i just absolutely love this new grass i'm going to be spraying it everywhere i could possibly find and so we end up after the kangaroo here i'm going to come up here and this is the last animal from the australia pack this is actually the the first pack that I've used every single animal from just because I I had such a theme here and I really wanted to make sure that everybody was included and used and so we've got the dingoes over here and um, the dingoes are actually in a sort of larger setup um, as you can see in the back there's actually an open area which actually if uh, you can barely see the monorail going through there if you continue back straight that way you'll end up at the uh, Sun Bear Forest right next to the Sun Bear exhibit and so there's just this open slope there that wasn't really guest facing didn't really have any uh, sort of purpose and so what I decided to use it for was to open it up and create um, sort of a multi multi species backstage um, area sort of a forest here um, which the dingoes um, can be rotated through um, sometimes the dingoes get to use it, and sometimes the hyenas, which are next door, get to use it. And um, it, it's just a really great enrichment. Not only do they get to smell each other and have like this weird experience where they're like, hey, I don't know you, you're from a different continent. But also, um, also they get to um, explore a new environment. It helps with their enrichment um, and doesn't keep them confined to one space that they never get um to have a break from it all. 
Um, so the dingoes, because they are a much larger family right now, they get full-time access to it, um, mostly because I um, just didn't want to deal with <laughs> trying to close the gate and, and figure out who goes where. Um, but the dingoes get access to that, and as we continue over, we've got this wonderful uh, signage here uh, for the, like, can you find your dog in this family tree? I found this online, and I just had to uh, plaster it in the park somewhere because it's just a set. This is the kind of stuff I love where we, we get to figure out how all the animals evolve from something. And it's just, it's such a nice uh, little feature here so that you can connect what your home life is like to what the zoo life is like and what the animals in the world are like. And so back here, we've got um, our access. Uh, we got a little outdoor area here, which I'll show you in a second for the um, hyenas. And they, the keepers just come down here. We've got both access, the dingoes and the hyenas. Um, the dingoes, uh, they're both mirrored. So they, they both look the same. We've got our um, door controls here on the side, um, which would then um, lead to the back paddock here, which I'm going to actually, I think I'm going to put another uh, bunker over here um, because the dingo program I've decided uh, in the lore of the game, the dingoes are, um, we're doing a breeding program here. So having an extra um, a bunker over here for um, extra help for mother dingoes and whatnot and the cubs, um, like sort of a vet area as well. Uh, would be really useful and then also this will back up to um, the access trail um, which will um, be looking on to a very different exhibit on the other side uh, another dog uh, which I'll talk about in a little bit um, and so if we go on this side and we come back up here not only do we have one of the awesome new palm trees here which I just think are so cool I did sink some of those, I think that's the dragon, um, no, I think it's the, ooh, I have to learn all the names of these plants now, but I sunk, I sunk them into the ground there, I think they look really cool, kind of sunken in there, more like a bush. Um, and then we come over here, and we've got the hyena exhibit. Now I really, really wanted to create something that um, had this arid look, and of course that grass oh my gosh just putting that in the rocks um, already adds this crazy sense of realism to it um, but this is what I mean this would be um, an example of um, of an exhibit that used to be like all concrete but then they they brought in a whole bunch of um, dirt and pl and um, and they probably had this tree here before this because this is a much older tree uh, so they they probably had these things in before, but they brought in a lot more dirt um, to to make it a lot more naturalistic here, and we've got some signage here to meet the girls because I decided to make it a trio of girls because um, that's a lot of times in zoos they will keep um, they will keep their exhibits monogendered just to um, deal with the hierarchies a little bit better because um, it, as soon as you combine the genders. Uh, so there's fighting that happens, people get territorial, people decide that they, uh, or animals decide that they want to uh, fight each other for everything. Um, but it's just kind of, um, ooh, it's kind of uh, just this simple area over here, and I just, I love it. And I love that I can use the hyenas over here, because um, they're just... They're so cool. Just the model of this animal. Like, this game has been out for, for so long, it feels like now, and I just finally getting to use the hyenas. I love them. They're just so bloody cool. And especially because they all have different colors now. Um, we've got the silver one and, and a couple different shades of brown. It's just, it's just very cool. And so this is the backdoor access for the uh, Gemsbok. And as we can see in here, um, we've got kind of these pens. Uh, with these uh, metal doors and they can come through and chill out in here and now we're back to the beginning and it circles back around um, all the way to the Australia section again alright well that is the eastern expansion of the park um, 
as you can see here, we've got this lovely um, open space here. And that is, I'm really, really excited to get started on that because that is going to be where the open savanna exhibit is going to be. Um, and actually, um, if we take a look at this here, we're going to have the open savanna sort of over on the right here. Um, we're going to lead down into this canyon here where the um, uh, where we've got the, the sun bear forest and um, penguins. Uh, we got our new African penguins are going to go here. So for those of you who are familiar with um, uh, with the Africa exhibit in the San Diego Zoo, I'm going to do a heavily modified version of that. But one thing I definitely want to keep are the penguins because I think that exhibit is so cool. It's so cool. The indoor section is really awesome. And then they've got this outdoor area over here. So I'm going to try and emulate that. We've got the backstage here for the pumps. <laughs> we got the backstage here for the pumps. And then we're going to have all sorts of cool animals here. And now we have more animals that we can uh, throw in. Though I definitely think I'm going to save the meerkats for the children's area of the zoo. And that, ladies and gentlemen, is it for this section of the park. Thank you again for coming with me on this journey. I'm really excited to get to show off these things I've been working so hard on for all these years. Uh, all these years. It's only been a year and a half. Come on. What, a, what time? What time is it? I lost track. I've been in this park for so long. But I'm finally excited to be able to show these things off. And I'm really excited to get to show off this whole new section um, as it's being built. Um, I am think I'm going to actually do a sort of step-by-step -step here on the next video to outline exactly what um, what my plan is and show you sort of my building process as well because I know how much um, you guys appreciate uh, seeing how other people build and how other people sort of think through the process as well. Um, so until that time comes, I hope you enjoyed this video and I will see you on the next one.